Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, we're gonna go over all the new HomeKit features in iOS 14. At WWDC last week, which was Apple's developer conference, we saw a lot of new features be announced for iOS 14 and iPad and Mac and everything, which I covered in a separate video linked down below. But in this one, we're gonna focus on HomeKit. Now HomeKit didn't get a lot of stage time, which was to be expected, but we did get some new features sort of previewed and we're gonna go over them in this video. First up is adaptive lighting. This feature will automatically change the color temperature of your smart lights from sort of cool to warm as the day goes on and as nighttime comes. Our phones have had a very similar feature called night shift, which basically changes the color temperature of your phone to be more orangey because it's better in your eyes as the evening progresses and it's better for your circadian rhythm. It isn't yet available on the iOS 14 beta, so I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but I'm sure as it is rolled out in one of the future betas, I will cover it and update you guys. Next up is the further integration of HomeKit into the Apple TV. Now the Apple TV works as a HomeKit hub, but it doesn't really do a whole ton sort of past that. Well, now you're gonna have integration with your sort of alerts and your cameras with HomeKit. So if someone comes up to your front door and you've got a security camera out there that is connected to HomeKit, it can then pop up a notification on your screen, a sort of picture-in-picture -picture window of that camera feed. In conjunction with that, there's a cool new feature of facial recognition and then announcements through your HomePod. So for example, you know, if your family comes to visit you and they come to the front door and you got a camera there, the camera can recognize who it is and announce through your HomePod, you know, your mom is here or your dad is here or whoever. Now the facial recognition part is done through the tags in your Photos app. So if you got pictures of your friends and family and then you tag them as mom, dad, you know, whoever, then that's how it sort of back checks that information. And it's all done locally. It never goes to some sort of cloud server, which is a great triumph for both privacy and HomeKit features. The camera will also log anyone that is detected as it sort of sees them. So then anyone that's unknown, but maybe comes frequently, you can then tag them within HomeKit. So for example, if you have a regular, you know, uh, delivery driver that comes to your house or you have like a dog walker or someone like that, that you wouldn't feel comfortable, you know, hey, can I take your picture so I can add it to my camera? Instead, it'll pop up as unknown in your phone and then you can just go in afterwards and tag them as delivery person, dog walker, whoever. HomeKit cameras also gain the feature of activity zones, something that is long awaited and that is definitely uh, very necessary if you live on like a busy street or something. Activity zones will basically tell your camera to ignore a certain part of their field of view because it's not important to you. So if you live you know, close to a sort of street and there's constantly people walking by the sidewalk or there's cars coming by, something like that, you probably get a thousand notifications, but none of them are particularly important to you. So with activity zones, you can then draw a zone within the view of the camera and then have it only notify you when something happens within that zone. And lastly, there are a few new redesigned features on the Home app for iOS 14. So let's jump into those as well. On my iPad Pro here, I've got the iPad OS 14 beta, and on this iPad here, we have iOS 13. Right off the bat, you can notice that there's a new sidebar on the side. Uh, this basically replaces the tabs that were previously in the Home app. Now you can also notice that the status of your home has been changed at the top there. Here, it's still there, but it's words so it's not quite as you know glanceable information if you tap on it that's the way you can sort of action on anything versus here it's all immediately to you you can actually you know tap on this to turn the lights off you can tap it again to turn them on it tells you kind of basically the status of your home as well as your temperature reading so depending on where your sensors are and what temperatures they're reading you know here i can see all the different uh, temperatures and the humidity it gives me a range Tell me if there's any motion, if my doors were unlocked, that would be up there as well. So that's a very nice way of presenting glanceable information on the status of your home. And it goes on through the rest of your home. So wherever you have sensors or wherever there's some sort of uh, motion detectors or something's on, that sort of information will always be at the top for every room. And lastly, there are changes to Control Center, which is very welcome. So if we take a look at those on both different iOSs, in iOS 13, all you had was a little home icon. You tap on that, it shows you your nine uh, favorites, your you know, favorite scenes, and if you wanted more than that, you'd have to tap on the home icon there. 
versus an iOS 14, you've got the home icon for your favorites, and you've got three different scenes here. And this can also be interchanged with different devices, but you can't control which devices or which scenes appear, which is kind of really frustrating. I'd really like to be able to just, you know, pin a couple different devices and, you know, a scene or a sort of mix and match them to be able to not even have to go into my favorites, but these are like my favorite favorites and those are always going to be there accessible to me. Now, if I tap on favorites, this is a big deal. You now have everything. You have all your favorite scenes and all your favorite accessories. You're no longer limited to just nine. You can have all of them there. And if you want to go past that, you can actually tap on that little arrow there at the top and you can jump from room to room. So you basically don't actually have to go into the home app if you want to quickly um, access a device or check the status of something. You can quickly go to master bedroom and I can see all my lights and stuff there. So this is very, very welcome and I'm super happy they have updated this in iOS 14. And there you have it, all of the new HomeKit features in iOS 14. Obviously as the betas sort of keep rolling out and there are new features that um, are unveiled, I will be sure to cover them. So, you know, follow me on Twitter or something like that because those things might just not warrant an entire video, but that way you can keep up to date. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And until next time, see ya.